Welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it as much as time will allow us. And this morning we'll have a couple of papers with us. Uh, we have The Nation, The Punch, The Guardian, Business Day. But we will begin with The Punch newspaper, which I believe would be displayed for you shortly. And it says, Ongtad six three point four trillion dollars debts write-off for Nigeria and others. That's on page 21. And... Umahi life ban on journalists, anti-people, and dr draconian, according to MBA. That story is on page 11. Buhari and others urge prayers as Ramadan starts today, page 11 also. And 50 billion naira uh, CBN loans to SMEs, others end in 2024. Some bit of good news for SMEs there, and that story is also on page 24. And the big story for the Punch newspaper is NMA fumes, as federal government says 40 health workers test positive. That's the reason on page two. And it says, three doctors test positive for coronavirus in Lagos. Can we yet to resume testing? NCDC and the World Health Organization deploy 17 officers. And lockdown impacts will determine extension, says uh, the Presidential Task Force. And if you scroll down, I believe that will be done a bit, you will see picture stories. Uh, there, heavy traffic at mile 12 bus stop on Ikorodu Road, K2, and the checkpoints of Yanopaja end of the Lagos Abiyokuta Expressway in Lagos on Thursday. And, um, uh, and we have Lebanese offering Nigerian woman for sale on Facebook, arrested on page 5, and policeman kills a female colleague in Rivers on page 10. And Lagos has certified 49 Abidjan returnees free. That's according to Ocean State. And we have NNPC partners do donates ambulances and others to southwest states. And that story is also on page 22. Now, family, friends, and demand justice as estate chairman kills footballer. That story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And with me this morning to make sense of this would be uh, pub political analyst, Gbola Oba. Good morning, Mr. Oba. Good morning. And good. How are you? I'm well, how are you yourself? I'm blessed. Good. So we are beginning this morning with the Punch newspaper. Uh, and let me begin by asking you your thoughts on the fact that NMA fumes as a federal government says 40 health workers now test uh, positive to the coronavirus. What are we not getting rightly? What do you think? Oh, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that health workers will ultimately be uh, more pronounced victims of the virus. And the reason is that they are frontline workers. The NMA also has the right to film because from the get go, they've been accentuating the fact that uh, the personal protective equipment requisite for the correct treatment of such a contagious. Uh, disease has not been provided. So one understands the position of the enemy. Indeed, this morning, apart from the 40 what, uh, apart from the 40 health, health workers, workers yeah. who are testing positive for COVID-19, there are altogether about 71 health workers who are testing positive for COVID-19 and Lassa fever. Mm -hmm. Let's be very honest with ourselves. In a country like Nigeria, that number of earth workers being literally now infected with the diseases that they set out to treat people for is in itself a slap on our healthcare infrastructure. But shouldn't we be worried? Because, you know, if healthcare uh, workers who are literally on the front lines uh, supposing uh, to be helping to curb the spread, if they are now victims, so to speak, are we not in a dire situation? We are in a dire situation, let's be very honest with ourselves. Uh, and the reason why without wanting to sound like a doomsday analyst. The reason why I'm emphasizing the fact 
that we are in a bad situation is that we don't seem to have gotten our act together on the, on the sufficient, sustainable, and proficient provision of personal protective equipment. You, because you must realize that art workers are not only supposed to don face masks like like the members of the public like, like the members of the public have been enjoying their own face mask comes with a special recommendation and N95. And apart from that, they also have to be well suited in a protective all body covering gear. Have you ever seen, apart from those at Yaba, whose pictures we see, how many health workers are there, especially those who function in private hospitals that people trickily go to without disclosing their travel history and their medical history. Have we ever seen anybody in the public of Situ doing such a year? Right, let's, let's move away from that a bit now and look at the measures that have been put in place. You know, one of the things that we know is um, during this lockdown, apart from the lockdown, is the fact that we're talking about social distancing and saying, you know what, people stay at home as much as you can because if food do not move, the virus cannot move. Essentially, if you stay in a place, it means that the virus dies because it cannot move. Now, if you take a look at the paper we are reviewing this morning, if you just scroll down, uh, you will find pictures, uh, stories, there of gridlock, There's, there is some um, snarl up of hold up and you're wondering where are people going with all of this amount of cars on the road? Does it seem like we are flouting the you know, stay at home order and the lockdown is not effective? Yeah, that picture is already displayed there. You can see, you know, uh, there seems to be activity going on. It looks really busy. This looks like a normal day in Lagos. So what are we not do? What, what are we not, not paying attention to? Uh, uh, I really want to believe, without wanting to uh, traduce the importance of your point, I really want to believe that we are looking at the wrong direction if we're talking about those, if we're talking about traffic congestion at this, at this point. I, I can be the only person in my car whilst my car is in a traffic congestion. My sister, you really need to be looking at the sociological reality that we have to contend with beyond the issue of traffic congestion. Have you ever been to any of our inner per city? Se that we are talking about is the fact that we are seeing movement. People are moving around. That's what we're talking about. And it seems like the lockdown is not effective, my point. The lockdown can never be effective if you let me finish. It will never be effective in most urban, urban areas of Nigeria. You want to lock people down in Ajegule. You want to lock people down in, in Mushi. Go to, I, I drove through, I drove through a place in, in K2, uh, You know, just by a major TV, TV station. You want me to shock you? Most of those neighborhoods still function as though there is nothing like SARS-CoV-2, specifically called COVID-19, in the global news. In the global news trend, people still literally rob flesh of flesh. Balconies of balconies of tenement houses still have people congesting the balconies. So I, I'm sitting there now, being asked a question about traffic congestion, and I'm thinking. Do you, do you know that that is just a, a peripheral issue to deal with now? When, and as we speak now, we are already at the stage or stage of community transmission of, of, the, of, of the infection. So I am far more concerned about the sociological realities that we have to contend with in places like Mushi, in places like Ajegule, in places like Ikota, even, look, 
uh, some names may sound quite uh, you know, uh, uh, upscale, Victoria Island, uh, uh, Elebushi, but just by the corner of your TV station there, you want to see the number of, of I say, young men who are cat pushers and this thing, who literally gather together, and we are talking of traffic congestion. My sister moved to another point. <laughs> All right, well, in the interest of time, I'll say hold your thoughts there, though, but we'll go to the nation newspaper and see what's happening there. Uh, Buhari observes social distancing. Buhari says, observe social distancing in Ramadan. Uh, begins fasting, says Sultan. Abakoba, that story is on page seven, and Abakoba, following on others, knock Umahi for barring reports. An MTN group to reduce take in Nigerian arm, and that's 75% up for sale. That story is on page 25. And the big story there is uh, uh, COVID-19 patients reject transfer to treatment centers. A minister to invoke law to forcibly uh, move them. We have also on the paper 108 new uh, virus cases. And to the right, you see the figures, both well, global figures and, of course, our local figure here in Nigeria. Now, Mr. Bola, uh, Mr. Oba, if you can hear me. Uh, what's Perfect. your reaction on that story? Basically, it's looking at uh, people who are high profile and have rejected to go to the isolation centers for treatment. Uh, should we be having this kind of uh, uh, behavior, so to speak, to deal with during this time? Because the, president, because the presidency ironically started it. God bless his soul, the late chief of staff to the president was tested positive. We didn't know his whereabouts. It was being circulated then that he flew from Abuja to Lagos. And when he got to Lagos, there was no report that he was being treated in the, in the isolation center in Lagos. This was after the federal government had told the, the public that it would be incumbent on anybody who was tested positive to be moved to a dedicated isolation center. Ultimately, the gentleman passed. God bless his soul. We are not saying this to mock him or ridicule his memory. Ultimately, the gentleman passed. His body was again flown after a Bonafide minister of the Federal Republic has stated days before that the cadaver of anybody who passed as a patient of COVID-19 would, would not be released. His body was released again, flown back to Abuja, and a very comical, indeed lousily comedic funeral ceremony was held against the protocol that we were intimated with. If you were to be a big person, or if you were to be influential in today's Nigeria, would you also not want to enjoy what the late chief of staff enjoys? I am not saying it's right, but you know, when you live in a society, when you see people who ought to, by example, show respect for the law, when you see them not respecting the law, what would you be tempted to do? So I am not sure. To be, when I saw that, when I saw that headline on the uh, on the front of the uh, all the major newspapers today, I just shook my head because I had them be so stupid. All right, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Bola Obad there. And I have my second guest also online, which is policy analyst Ifi Oji. Uh, Ifi, if you can hear me, we are moving on to the next paper, and um, it's the Guardian newspaper. It says, fresh calls for re restructuring as COVID-19 batters economy. That will be the front on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And um, Ohanes, uh, Pandev, and others demand economic diversification. And Analysts urge salary cuts, trimming of bloated budgets, and panic as 40 health workers test positive for coronavirus. Adamawa bars journalists from seat of power over coronavirus. That story is on page three. Woman allegedly beats maid to death and claims it's suicide. Uh, that's somewhere here in Lagos, and that story is on page eight of Metro. 
And ECOWAS leaders named Buhari champion of COVID-19 response. That story is on page 40. And of course, you have the global figures, uh, the uh, local figures, rather right, national figures of COVID-19 displayed there. Ifi, can you hear me? Hi, Amaka. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. I'm sorry morning. about the confusion earlier. Uh, no worries at all. It happens. So let's go quickly to the kind of things you talk about. Economy and, uh, you know, analysts are saying, are uh, urging that salary be cut during this time and trimming of bloated budgets. What are your thoughts on that? What, 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 what I generally think about it is it's from a, it's a, it's a larger perspective uh, viewpoint, Amaka, as you are well aware. I, I know for a fact that in times of crisis, and history has been a very good uh, recorder of this, in times of crises, everything becomes so transparent. Mm -hmm. So where, where there was obfuscation before, where there were issues and, and blockages before, Christ, times of crisis always uh, reveal all the things that are hidden and 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 and, and are definitely they are definitely brought to light. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine what uh, any kind of uh, malpractice, any kind of malfeasance, any kind of issues that would have ordinarily been okay or uh, business as usual in any other kind of uh, period don't, would not translate today. So mm -hmm. I can understand why they would feel this way, and I think that yes, this is probably the best time to act. Right. Okay, let's talk also about, um, you know, demand for economic diversification. You know, we've always had that conversation and saying, yes, it's time to do it and, you know, going back and forth. Is it now necessary that that's the only way out, in your opinion? I think, yes. I mean, for, for, for to, just to look at uh, several other economies and why Nigeria is going to have a particularly challenging time uh, post-COVID is the, f the fact that certain sectors that would ordinarily be uh, thriving sectors in other developing economies, for example, are in a in a sort of impasse in Nigeria today, I, I know I don't know if you were, there was a famous uh, interview that was held by another news, sta news uh, station that will remain nameless with a, with a young SME uh, owner who was obviously of the opinion that the government hadn't done enough in terms of giving them incentives to continue their normal operations. So you'd find, for example, like uh, other in other economies where you have. Um, uh, core, core uh, necessities such as food and other sort of welfare um, uh, um, businesses, they tend to thrive. But for whatever reason, Nigeria is, according to what the young lady said, is at a, at, at a 5% in terms of um, the capacity, of uh, income generating capacity. So it begs the question, which way forward? How can we find ourselves in the next uh, stage of uh, of what what the, what the promise is? Other countries have been able to give other incentive packages, have been able to find ways to boost or to try and massage the economy. But Nigeria, right now, even with all our billions that have been donated, we haven't yet um, drawn that game plan that we need to do so, so as quickly as possible. All right, Tiffy, thank you. Let me move on to uh, Bola Oba there. In the news, uh, Mr. Ogba, can you hear me? Perfectly. Great. In the news also, we saw that, you know, the ECOWAS community has commended or named Buhari as the champion of COVID-19 response. What are your thoughts on that? I should be very honest with you. I was telling my wife yesterday when she asked me that what has he done spectacularly to deserve this. And I told her that the, the influence, the size, the power of Nigeria is what is being respected here. Let's be very honest with ourselves. Lagos State alone, the population of Lagos State alone is, is up to cumulatively the population of about seven countries in the neighboring, uh, you know, seven neighboring countries in the region. So Lagos State alone, if you combine Togo, Benin Republic, just go further like that and remove Ghana, Senegal, and Ivory Coast, seven countries. The, the cumulative population is not up to Lagos' uh, population. So, and Nigeria has 200 million. So, uh, and because this is an infection that has to be managed at the level of per capita relevance of humanity, I just think uh, the, the designation is ceremonial, is titular, is on, is perhaps honorific, my opinion. Because let's be very honest with ourselves, our president, much respect to him, has largely played a laggardly role 
at least as an ostensibly laggardly role in the in the fight against we are not seeing the captain on the bridge of the street. Hmm. All right, if I know you are there, but we'll quickly take the last paper, which is Nigerian Tribune. Sure, sure, yeah, and it says oil prices. Okonjo Iwala recommends economic restructuring. Lebanese who advertise Nigerian women for sale on Facebook arrested on page 28. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine trial begins. And UK injects two humans on page two. Military mm -hmm. destroyed terrorists abode in Borno, Benue, and Taraba and kills three. Recover arms on page 28. And 40 health workers test positive for coronavirus, according to Minister. Hanire on page three. And COVID-19, the presidential task force crumbles to contain Kano infections, excited with governor's position on lockdown on page uh, three. And again, ECOWAS leaders want debt cancellation, meets via teleconference, make Buhari champion of COVID-19 uh, response. And that story is also on page page three. And if you had, I guess I'll ask you to speak on that. What's your thoughts on ECOWAS uh, leaders asking for debt cancellation? I think it's a good idea. I, I, can you repeat the headline again? Sorry, Amaka. Okay, so it says ECOWAS leaders want debt cancellation. Uh, meet via teleconference, make Buhari champion of COVID-19 response. Uh, basically wanting you to just share your thoughts on that. Okay, I think it's a good idea for debt cancellation. At this point now, I mean, I'll, I'll just even look at, let, let's even move away from the ECOWAS and look at Nigeria in, in terms of our analysis, where we are a snapshot right now, a year to end analysis. Mm -hmm. Right now, our, all, our Nigerian Stock Exchange All Share Index is down by 15 points. We have a balance in our ex excess crude account at $70 million, which is like probably about a, 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 a fraction, a mere fraction of what it ordinarily would be. Our cost per barrel on Brent crude is also at 28. So we know that the, that if if this is what Nigeria is going through right now, that it, should, it will obviously be uh, felt there'll be reverberations across uh, the West African states. So any kind of uh, requirement to sort of fulfill any debt obligation right now is not going to really be a very practical one. And another thing that also they should also note is that um, with 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 um, with 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 the ECOWAS as well is that. Um, Nigeria, even though we normally would take the lead in terms of where we are supposed to be with uh, 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 um, with loans, we know that other 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 countries that are even better off have been given uh, loan uh, breaks or any kind of moratorium in terms of how they're going to pay these loans. So I think the same uh, grace should actually be uh, be given to the West African states as well. So, uh, Mr. Agbola Oba, hopefully you're still there, I believe. Yes, please. Okay, so the last uh, uh, topic on review is um, uh, the World Health Organization have redeployed uh, 17 persons to Kano State to be able to help to curb the situation that, you know, what is going on in Kano State that we're not clearly sure whether it's COVID-19 or it's a combination of different other things. Does that suggest that, yes, we, are, we need external help in some states to be able to curb the, this COVID-19 spread, especially in such states like Kano that is now looking as vulnerable? All countries of the world at this juncture, all countries of the world need help to combat this virulent novel coronavirus called scientifically SARS-CoV-2 and commonly known as COVID-19. No country can fight it alone. That's the fact. We have seen even United States of America, the great America, having countries like Russia, China, sending help in materials. So at this juncture, we cannot afford to snub any form of help, especially from the World Health Organization. But having said that, we have a cultural body that is that may turn out to be a major a major class on our healthcare infrastructure as a result of what is happening in Kano. The leaders the leaders of Kano and indeed respected Islamic leaders in Nigeria really have to go to Kano not so much 
So go and talk to people, but they really need to enlighten people about the laudable values of the Islamic faith. As we speak now, the Saudi government has counseled, has, has counseled public prayers for Ramadan this year. There are still many people. There was a protest, a footage sent to me yesterday. What people are saying, Corona, Babu, Corona, Babu, Corona. Mainly young stars no uh, and majority My sister, <laughs> may God just let what I had from the podium of the White, from the press podium of the White House yesterday be true. Because the President of the United America brought the Undersecretary for Science and Technology to address the public yesterday, and he was saying authoritatively that from the researchers in one of their major laboratories, that the ultra violet light or the sun rays may be inimical to the virus. It may not totally extirpate it, but that it reduces its potency. I know Kano is a temperate region. I just played that fact. That scientific fact is right. All right, Kualaba, a political analyst and EFI policy analyst. Thank you very much for joining me this morning on Newspaper Thank Review. And please. Thank you so much, Amaka. Sorry about the earlier on. No worries. Stay safe, you both. Thank you very much. And that's where we call it a wrap here on Off the Press. We'll do this Monday to Friday here on, on, on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I am Amaka Okoye saying please stay safe.